It's important to configure your PCB grid in the early stages of PCB design to allow for ease of component placement and routing. This is also beneficial for adding symmetry and alignment to your board for future edits. In today's tutorial, I'll show you how to configure your PCB grid. We'll explore the grid manager and take a look at its uh, functionality. We'll also add our own custom Cartesian and polar grids. So let's get started. When creating a new PCB document, Altium imposes a default grid spacing or a default grid on your board, as you can see right here. This default grid usually comes with a 5 mil spacing between the various snap points. This general grid is known as the global board snap grid. It's the default snap grid that's always enabled in the PCB environment, but it has the lowest priority if you have created other custom grids. And so other custom grids will always show before the global grid does. Let's measure the grid spacing for demonstration purposes. I'm going to measure distance. You notice that it snaps perfectly and it says it's five mils. Now, how do we change our grid spacing? Well, you can do this in a number of ways. One way is to click on G on your keyboard and you can see the various preset spacing change it to 10 mils and here you can see the grid uh, from a, an overview, a larger overview of the board and see its details up close and again when we measure the dis distance in this case we'll see that it's set to 10 mils etc. We can also change the grid spacing by right clicking on the board and going to snap grid and changing it that way. There's probably several other ways as well but in any case, what is the standard? Because when, when we design our board, we want to follow uh, the standard that's set by designers and set by the industry. Well, usually, 50 thou is, is the working standard for a general board, where general routing is involved and general component placement. But that can change quickly as you add more components and as you uh, make your board more tight. And so you can work your way to a, a finer PCB grid. Another PCB layout practice when creating your PCB grid is to use a set of standard grid spacings such as 50, 25, 10, or 5. Because as you'll notice these are multiples of each other and so it's easier to work with. And that's why I would suggest you work with the larger uh, numbers first, larger spacing starting at 50, and then you'll notice that you can fit two 25s in 50 and as such, so component placements are, uh, or components are aligned more easily, and the route, routing is aligned more easily, and the spacing is more efficient. Let's take a look at the grid manager. There are a number of ways of accessing it. We can either right click in the context menu and go to snap grid, and click on grid manager, or we can simply click on G on our keyboard to go to the grid menu properties and options. Then we can choose grid manager or we can simply go to tools and click on grid manager. As you can see this is the default uh, global board snap grid that has been set. This can't be turned off so it's always on and it's always configured for non-components uh, such as tracks, uh, other mechanical entities as well as components. Let's light, right click and add Cartesian grid. And we'll double click on it to edit its properties. Over here we'll give it a new name You can configure the unit that we need to work with. Uh, in this case, I'll just leave it as Imperial. And I, don't, I also don't need to rotate it. I'll just leave it as is. I can configure the step size of each snap point. And in this case, I'd like to leave it as 50 mils. Also notice that both the X and Y are linked. But if you, for some reason, you'd like to have a different uh, spacing between uh, between the X direction and the Y direction, you can set that as well by unlinking the, uh, these two. I don't recommend it. Down below we can configure the origin or where our grid starts and right now it's configured to where my origin uh, is set but I can change that by configuring it in the PCB view. So my origin is set down below over here. But I can configure it as I like. 
And moving over to the extent section, here we can define the size of our grid in terms of width and height, the area that we'd like to cover. And again, these two have been linked together, forming a square. But I can break that by breaking that link. And we can configure, again, the width in the PCB view. So I'll click on that. And if you notice at the very bottom over here, it gives you the action. It's asking us to choose the first location. So I just chose the first edge of the board. I'll choose a second. I'll conf it'll configure the, the width for you. And we can do the same thing for the height. So I'll choose the first point and choose the second. Now, quadrants allow you to specify where you would like to show your grid based off of the origin. Imagine that the origin is at the center of uh, this vertical and this horizontal line right here. You can set the origin into the second quadrant on the left hand side or the bottom or the fourth. We just like to leave it on the first for here. And finally the display. There are two types of lines in the grid. The coarse lines which are uh, visible from a, a larger view of the board and from a a far zoom out view of the board and the fine lines are the lines of the grid when you're zoomed in into the board so here you can configure whether you want to display these lines uh, whether you want to show them as dots or not draw them at all and you can even configure their color so in this case let's go with orangey color for the fine lines and for the coarse ones, we'll go with pink. The multiplier allows us to specify where the coarse lines are placed. Since the fine lines, uh, which are exactly the grid steps that we defined, multiply by the multiplier will allow us to specify the coarse lines. And we'll take a look at that so it's not confusing. Now let's apply and click OK. And here you can see the fine spacings, which have been set. Let's measure that. We can measure between the orange snap points, and you'll see that they're 50 mils. And when we zoom out, you'll notice that we can't see the fine lines anymore, but we'll notice the coarse lines. And these are a multiple of five times, meaning that these should be 250 mils. I don't have to cover my entire board. I can specify a certain region for my board. So here let's say 3000 and let's link them up and apply. And you'll notice that my custom grid super superimposes over the general grid as I've mentioned as this has a higher priority. Let's go ahead and add a custom polar grid. So again we'll go to the grid manager and we'll right click and we'll add polar grid. Let's double click on that and we'll edit its name and again I'll go through these options now this part is the most important so I'd like to go into detail here there are two properties to configure the grid spacing in a, in a polar grid the angular step and the radial step the angular step is defined in terms of degrees and this is a certain amount of degrees per step as you can see here is defined as five degrees whereas the radial step is the distance or the step distance uh, that's defined away from the origin in a radi radial manner I think this is very well explained over here go back to the grid manager I'll leave that as such again we can configure the origin and in this case let's choose it right here and here we can define the extent or the range of our grid in terms of an angular range I'd like to go to a complete circle so we'll go with 360 degrees and the radial range we can begin at 0 to uh, add a, a complete circle or we can define it at a certain minimum region and end it at another so in this case let's go with 1500 and again, we can define the fine and coarse grids. So in this case, we'll go with green. All right.
here we go so notice that the Cartesian or the polar grid now has a higher priority and that's why it's showing on top so the, the polar grid is the first in terms of priority then the then the custom Cartesian grid then the global board snap grid so when I bring in my components notice that it didn't allow me to place my component and the reason why is because I didn't specify that this grid should allow components as you'll see it's only enabled for non-components but if I define it for components when I drag my component around you'll see that now I can uh, see the grid and place my component as such one final thing I wanted to show you guys is that we can even import and export grids and this is great for working with your colleagues and uh, you have uh, a particular grid that you'd like them to work on you can always send it over and they could use it so when you click on menu you can see a lot more options that I didn't cover but one of them being import grid and export selected and so you can export that and share it with your with your colleagues and that's it for today's presentation I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, tune in for more tutorials thanks <laughs>